church, and welcome to our Christmas season of worship. We're excited to be here with all of you, and we're excited to be here with all of you online. Thank you for being with us tonight. If you're online, you can go ahead and like and share this on your socials, and you can invite other people to join us tonight who might not know that we're live right now. So we are blessed. We're going to hear testimonies today, and we're going to dive into Hebrews 6 tonight. A lot of people have been asking about Hebrews 6. It's taken us three weeks to get here <laughs> because the Holy Spirit's just been so present and so alive in his word. But I'm excited for it. So we're going to pray, and we're going to enter into this time of worship and fellowship with Christmas songs. We're super excited. All right. Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for your goodness. We just come now and we present ourselves to you. Everything we have, Jesus, is a gift from you. Everything we've been given, everything we are becoming is because of you, Jesus Christ. And so we now surrender. We surrender everything we are everything we have and we bring it under your lordship right now in this moment to declare Jesus Christ is Lord you are Lord over my life God you are Lord over this entire world you are Lord over all creation you are Lord over eternity and you are Lord over right now we are here tonight to gather in your name to exhort one another in your word and in spirit and in truth, to worship, to humble ourselves and to exalt you, to behold you in the face of your son. We love you, God, and we thank you for your faithfulness, for your favor, for your fruitfulness, and for your incredible, amazing love. Be glorified in our midst tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
us in all your ways. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. Whoever you reign. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. Forever you reign. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt.
Jesus. You have the name that's high above every other name. God, every knee bows at the name of Jesus. Every tongue will confess that you are Lord. You alone are Lord. You alone have the title of mighty and powerful and victorious. Every battle belongs to you, God. You are the victorious one. You are the captain of the host. You are strong and mighty in this room right now. You are the winner, God. You have the final say. And I just thank you, Father, for being great and awesome in this place tonight, God. We call you awesome in this place. You're bigger than any fear. You're bigger than any stronghold. You're bigger than any chain. God, your very voice breaks the cedars in two. And I just thank you, Father, that even tonight you break wide open in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you cause chains to break off and fall to the floor, that you cause sickness and disease to be under your foot. Father, you're big tonight. You're big. You're mighty. You're strong. And you're victorious. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and honor. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the King of kings. Worthy is the Lamb. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. There's everything we need is in Him. His name carries all salvation. He is healing, salvation, deliverance. We praise his glorious name. We receive all blessing of Abraham inside of him. We receive all the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. All oh, praise you, Jesus. In the midst of life, in the midst of everything that we may be walking in, you are worthy of our praise. And you are Lord. And your name is great and greatly to be praised. And we receive you here now in the midst of where we are as we are in you, in Christ, with Christ, raised, raised, made alive, seated with. Our life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ appears, we'll appear with you in glory. We're anticipating change because we're inside of you. You are the change. You are the cause of all things. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Lord, thank you for the prayers of today. Thank you for the consecration that you brought us into. The scriptures that you unveiled and revealed in us. The prayers that were prayed. They were prayed over every living member of the body of Christ at Jubilee. And everyone to receive and participate. Everyone come into the encounters in the intention of heaven. You are the head and we are your body, the fullness of you who fills all in all. You are the cornerstone from which all measurement is made and the building fitted together. 
You are the firstborn of many brethren to whom we are all being conformed into your likeness and image. And you are our husband to whom we submit, to whom we allow you to wash us with the water of your word so that we might be so in practical, everyday ways, without spot or without wrinkle, knowing we are deeply beloved, accepted in the beloved. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Bishop. You are king of America. America has a president elected by the people, but you are king of America. You are king of China. You are king of North Korea, king of Saudi Arabia, king of every nation on the earth. Hallelujah. We exalt you above all men and institution, all nations and all peoples. You are king. You have redeemed us out of all the nations and tribes and peoples. Hallelujah. We praise and glorify you, great King Jesus, Lord of lords. Therefore, be wise. Be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Oh, Father, you have raised up Jesus and made him judge of all and proven it in the resurrection and distributed faith within the resurrection so that no man will be with excuse. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! For the creation even understands the Creator. Praise you. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. Forever you will be exalted. Shati Kabul. Oh, thank you for that we can be a people of prayer and pursuit, that we can behold your face, that we can approach God through you, that you carry us in your intercession to salvation to the uttermost, that you are our blessing. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Jesus Christ.
so much of the glory of God in this house in the presence so much that you in your home online there's something tangible so much of a deposit of God and his blessing and miracles and breakthroughs and answered prayer that are coming and being committed to us by the angelic forces that that bring down the blessings that God ascended up in prayer now he descends them and blesses us so praise God get ready what do you want what do you need what are you longing for what have you been petitioning position yourself to receive your petition position and expect something because before service is over a miracles transmitting of God's spirit of his virtue is going to happen hallelujah praise the Lord you may be seated but we want to stay in worship as we get our hearts prepared to give and to honor him with our tithes and offerings this being the first first of the new month it isn't really, but it seems like it. We just found out we we're $21,000 in the red for the four year to date. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus is not going to only overwhelm that. He's going to overtake it. And we're going to end the whole year in the black. And I'm just looking for some people to agree with me. I'm looking for faith, looking for agreement, and looking for expectancy. Maybe God wants to make the miracle come through you. Don't let the world that you're in limit where your faith is taking you. Look for the best. So, Lord, we just thank you that we have the opportunity to believe. We have the opportunity to honor you first and foremost. You are the first. Can never be the second. No God can be before you. It doesn't work. And anything that gets ahead of you dismantles everything in front of us. So we declare that you are number one, and therefore you receive our tithes, our offerings first and always, because you should. Without you, we could do nothing, and it's because of you, the God Most High, that you have caused us to prevail in our ad against our adversaries, in our pursuits, in our businesses, in our pr things you've given us. Hallelujah. So hallelujah. So $21,000 in the bread, you turn into the black, and the rest of the month you abound, and we see breakthroughs and miracles for the house of God that translates into the homes of God's members, his living body. Hallelujah. Praise you for the miracles that are here and the miracles that are coming, the ones of help of the dunamis of God in Jesus' name. So now we give with our joyful heart of expectancy even tonight in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So the buckets are up here for those in the house and on those online. It's uh, accessible on the screen and uh, it's either way here too. So blessings. Oh 
would feed them How can I possibly I barely have a mustard seed You're telling me it's all that's needed Just release it Cause five tiny fragments of faith Might be all I have on my plate Or even if all I can manage is one In your hands thank you that this is indeed the way of God, the way of the kingdom, the way of the king, the way of the seed time and harvest, multiplication, taking the loaves and two, three fishes and breaking, blessing, breaking and, and distributing and multiplying. And so it is with us, your own living bread, that you bring us grace. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to hear, Michael, would you kind of, because you just had that vision in worship. I believe it's a powerful one. And if you'll get, I'll get the buckets. We'll, we'll offer this before that. I'll help you. We got, forgot we were, this month we want to take a moment and always remember that this is indeed given to Melchizedek, our high priest. And it's not just what's in the bucket. It's what was done, transferred digital, digitally, what was given yesterday. It's like week to week offering to offering we collect it all lord we declare you are high priest and you receive tithes from abraham and there you establish that that priesthood would be forever and you lord jesus now have through the power of an endless life and be the power of the oath of god our high priest forever and you receive our tithes in heaven and you command the blessings and you cause those who carry promise to prosper because the blessing of the Melchizedek uh, priesthood because you intercede because you say I will come uh, you reveal the goodness and fullness of God so receive our tithes and we receive the blessing in Jesus name amen 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 yes go ahead Mike please yeah so I was uh, while we were worshiping I just like had this very clear picture about what God is doing in our midst right now. Um, I just saw, uh, like, within the church, it was so clear, um, a cornfield, and it was as if there were literal stalks of corn that were just rising up out of the floor, uh, like, amongst us, and the, you saw, like, the flowers starting to bud, and they were, like, actually, like, corn was starting to pop, and... Um, and, but, but there are so many of us, uh, and it wasn't like a particular face or person, so I'm not going to call you out, but there were so many of us that were just like we were walking around it as if nothing was going on. And I just felt like the Lord says, wake up, open your eyes, because I'm about to do something in this body that hasn't been done in an age, mm -hmm. and it's going to be different. There's going to be a spirit of generosity that works in this body, and it's going to 
push out the spirit of self and it's going to usher in a spirit of generosity and I saw people just with an overflow of love allowing the body to move in the gifts of the spirit in ways that they'd never have before and I just and I and I and specifically I felt like for the the Abrahams and the Sarahs in mm -hmm. this body I, I said be expectant because that same spirit that moved Smith Wigglesworth when he was over 50 is going to move in this church. And so just be ready for that harvest. It's going to give glory to Jesus. It's not too late. Your time is not over. Yeah. And there is something that is going to happen. So just be ready for that. Keep your eyes open for it. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. So, so Mike, when, when we see vision, declare testimony, or prophesy, then we just release it. Yeah, so yeah, pray it, yeah. pray, declare it over us. So right and if now, you want to, yes. a lot of times I'll just stand up so I can kind of put my posture of my heart to say I'm ready to receive this word, not despise it. Yes, right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, the author and finisher mm -hmm. of my faith, I decree and declare that Jubilee Church Lord, is about to receive a harvest, mm -hmm. Lord God, that it has never received before, Lord, that there is going to be heaven's gates open on this church, Lord God, and that there is going to be an abundance of favor on every person, every member, every open heart in this church right now, Lord God, and that there will be an overflow like a cup that bubbles up out of over, over the limits mm -hmm. of its cup. It is going to be a cup that overflows, and the gifts of the Spirit and the harvest, Lord, is going to be so abundant. Right now, I cancel off every lie that people have come in agreement with that says, I'm done, that I've seen it, that enough has been done, that I've experienced enough death. Lord, you have come not to, for death. You have come to give us life and life abundantly. Yes. Yes. And so, Father God, right now, I just release, Lord God, I release truth. I release vision over, over, my, over my brethren's eyes right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare, Lord God, that you will act first if the spirit of prophecy, Lord God, the spirit of seeing visions, God, would prevail in this church. And you would show this body, Lord, it's okay to believe again. It's okay to dream again. And so right now in Jesus' name, I just release that over yes. them yes. in Jesus' name. And I yes. thank you, God, and it's all your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We receive that, Lord. Yes. 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 So Friday night, 6.30, is the release of our album, Come Meet a Man. And it's a party, and it's a prayer focus to, const to give it unto the Lord, to release blessing on it, and to send it out. The CDs are all made and produced, and they will be available if you like. If you still do CDs, it's some of us that's very. It's hard to find CD players, but uh, in any case, I have one car that does. And also, we pray for us because we've got a, a a bit of timing to get. We want to make sure that all the digital platforms will be up and on that night, as well as the YouTube channel. That's going to premiere on that evening, the video of the Comita Man. So all that's happening, but there's, we're moving between countries to get that accomplished, and two of our most high-tech people are going to be out of town. Brian Rogers just is taking off this evening to go to uh, Lake Charles to help with a work project in the, where his son serves in ministry. And he'll be gone till Monday, and then the other, uh, Rob, is who are, does our webmaster, he's off. I think he's going fishing, but uh, that's still cool. I'm good with that. But in any case, they're all gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we want it on, in place that it turn, push a button, it turns on, and it's all there. That's the plan. But Jesus is Lord. And be, but come pray with us, because one of the things uh, that there is a transferable anointing to things when we focus on them. You know, Paul had aprons taken from his body that were taken to people who were sick or demonized, and when the apron laid on them, they were healed because the anointing is transferable. We will lay hands on all the CDs. We'll get them all out here, and we will pray over them and we impart to life so that when people come engaged in the worship, they'll have the visions, they'll have... What, what, you're gonna, what you'll hear, it's so 
it's so powerful because it's like the testimony of Jesus, which unlocks the spirit of prophecy, of who we are seeing Jesus to be and who he's revealing himself in Scripture. And now, now the songs, are, you can carry them with you in, in all, all ways. Saturday morning, men, everybody uh, who are men, 7.30 in the morning in the cafe we eat. Mike, you don't miss this one, right? Yeah, you were out of town, I know. But every, I want all of you men because... We're practicing, we're positioning ourselves to behold the Jesus inside of Scripture. And it may sound kind of like difficult, and it is often far not what we're accustomed to because we live in a world that has so invaded our senses that we don't really imagine or experience, let alone read. Too much is now just done for us completely. And yet... <clears throat> Jesus is discovered in Scripture, and when we behold him, there is an anointing of transformation. And we started it last week, last month. I've got testimonies I want you to hear of life-changing experiences just that Saturday. I want to hear from every man who's been practicing. And if you go, you'll get an email in the morning if you're part of the Jubilee a Secret Place. And you can go and watch the link of the morning and you'll, you'll, of last Sunday and Last, last month on Saturday, and just prepare yourself, because I think God's going to do some... Uh, he's talked to me about ma taking us into February, so I am anticipating acceleration in every level. So if you're, if you're positioning your heart in that same way, join us. 7.30, we eat, and we're getting more food, new food, uh, you know, and like I was writing a quick email to the guys in the inheritance, I say, you know, they, they, as I say, the Bible says, but it's not the Bible says, but we hear this all the time. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So I am saying, you got my heart, Lord. <laughs> I'm ready to hear. So 7.30, we're done by 10. So you can get on into your day. We don't go past 10. We make that a, a priority of discipline. And then lastly, Sunday morning comes. That's, oh, that's going to be awesome, if anything, I've seen the Lord in my prayer. But next Wednesday, we're going to move outside on purpose because we want to. No one telling us that we have to. And we're going to celebrate uh, ecstatically Jesus in the season. We're going to eat. We're going to dance. We're going to, we've got, uh, in fact, Mike, you're a good catch, and since you're the one with the kids, these are for your... I only got a... <laughs> Boy, it's kind of a weak arm, right? No, it's cotton. <laughs> There's no way to it. Those are for your two children. So that, that uh, snowballs. We're going to have uh, scavengers. We're going to have pictures. If you want a Christmas picture, they're all free. We're going to have Wood Ranch dinner. Start at 6, done about 7.30, and... Dress yourself warm, and if it's raining, duh, we'll come inside. All right? We're not that dumb. <laughs> we know when to come out of the rain. But if it's not raining, we're going to have fun. And we're really going to, so I really encourage you. We're doing this on purpose, and everybody, so please join us for that. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, testimonies we want to hear. I want to hear from Rosie in a moment, but Larry, you started the morning prayer. I, I, I want to seed you with an idea. Tell me if this starts to... I'm feeling like as we close the year, we're supposed to take the couple of prayer days, which would be like the one Wednesday before Christmas and the Wednesday before New Year's, and consecrate the days for specific intentionality. One, the one before Christmas to say, Lord, I want to bring all of my year before you and I want to reconcile it to you and I want to see you finish it well and I want you to bring about the completion of what you set in motion. And just just taking the time to say, Lord, I want to, I, I, I believe you're more than enough and you're more than able. So we don't just kind of stutter and sputter out. We, we roar. And then I believe the Wednesday before, between Christmas and New Year, would be a day to consecrate ourselves to the Lord, the new year to the Lord, before the year started. Lord, I want this year to be the year that you have chosen. This is the day you make. Make it this year, and I want to hear you. So we're going to listen, and we'll be making, hearing the decree of the Lord and making declarations. 
So we'll, we'll flow in that direction in the full day of prayer, however much you can be a part, or just know you're being, everyone's being activated. I pray for every member, every living member of the body of Jesus Christ at Jubilee Church. And I believe everyone is hearing the voice. So that's something we're sowing and praying into. It'll be the last two Wednesdays of this month. But in the midst of prayer, you discover Jesus like ways you just, it's just amazing because he walks in our midst. And if you have prayer meeting, he's in the midst of the meeting, those meeting. And so he starts uh, speaking to one and we hear the Lord in that person. That reminds me of something in scripture, takes me over there. So Larry, come on up and share what you, Larry leads the first group at 6 a.m. So yeah. And Diana, this is against your best wishes, but please turn the air conditioning on for a minute. I don't know if Brian Rogers here. <laughs> I know Diana wears sweatshirts here all day and then finally warmed up. But I know also we can wilt. I turned it down. So go back and forth, nice and kind. Go ahead, Larry. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. That's how it began. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And if Jesus' ministry began as the lamb. This whole book ends with the lamb. <laughs> and so he is the fullness of God, as we know. But this took me to the song of the lamb. And we did that. That was our theme for Nation's Prayer Sunday. And I couldn't, I didn't try to shake it. Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I'm going to read a few scriptures. Um, something that West Point, where there's just two of us at seven, at six, six thirty, seven, seven thirty, eight, and then others came. But we had an encounter, like Pastor has been saying. We sat right there. I want to show you what happened. I was right here, and Wes Grosby is right here, and Jesus came right here. Mm -hmm. And like Pastor just said, just said, we're two of the rear gathered in his name. Jesus is in the midst of it. And he literally stood, we're sitting, yeah. he stood right here mm. facing us and said, I normally pray to Jesus this way. You can pray to Jesus this way. He's right there mm. as our friend. And we were worshiping the lamb, the lamb. The song of the Lamb is Revelation 15.3. It says the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. But I want to take us to Revelation 5 because this is the greatest song of the Lamb. This is worthy as the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And we all know that scripture, if you ought to know that scripture, is where John is caught up to heaven and he hears and sees things that he's never, ever seen before. And he hears the voice said, who is worthy to open the scrolls and look therein? And no one is found worthy. This is Revelation 5, 1 through 4. And then he begins to weep. And one of the elders said, don't weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open yes. the seals to look their hands. Yes. And if you look in the rest of the book, Revelation, the line of the tribe of Judah is Israel, basically. That is a term right out of Israel. But you never see Israel again, because right there, it is, that goes from Israel to the entire world that Jesus saved. It goes from one nation that flag right there to 206 nations plus every tribe, plus every tongue, plus every people group from the biggest, which is China, 1.4 billion people to a tribe of 10 people. It goes, it expands instantly. And I read in, in uh, and this is why this is, Jesus was said, by Father to him as Messiah. 
He said in Isaiah 49, 6, Behold, God says, it's too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the nations. <laughs> this gets me when I read this. That you should be my salvation to the very ends of the Lord earth. And God praise God, God, we have this wall God, of flags God, over there. And Jesus is moving all oh across God, the nation, God. not just Israel. Israel is a special place in the heart of God. But the nations are what Jesus was slain for. Now I'll read that in Revelation 5. The Lamb. You never see the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah becomes the Lamb right then at that point. And, and I looked and behold, this is verse 6 of Revelation 5. I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures in the midst of the earth stood a Lamb as if it had been slain. This isn't some little bouncy lamb. This is a slaughtered lamb, but he's alive. He has seven horns and seven eyes. That's the seven spirits of God sent to all the earth. And Jesus, the lamb, walked up and took the scroll of the right hand of Father Satan on the throne. Whew. And now when he had taken the scroll, all of heaven is activated. They get activated. <laughs> and the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of saints. You think your prayers amount to something? Your prayers are in the bowl mm -hmm. of heaven. Mm -hmm. And they're poured out. They're mm -hmm. poured out to mm -hmm. worship Jesus. They're mm -hmm. poured out to save nations. Mm -hmm. They're poured out to heal people. They're poured out, poured out. Mm -hmm. And they sang a new song. Mm. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. Who, to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and you have redeemed us out of every kindred and tribe and okay. tongue and nation by your blood. And you have made us kings and priests and we shall reign with you upon the earth. Thank you, Jesus. And all of heaven mm. burst into praise, burst into worship. And I looked and I heard the voice of many angels. It's about a hundred million around the throne, the living creatures. And the number was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of sound, thousands. So the loud voice, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature is in heaven, every creature on earth, every creature under the earth, every creature in the sea, and everywhere in there, they begin to worship the Lamb. And worship he who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And the four and twenty elders fell down. And the, the four living creatures say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, Lord, you are worthy. Even as we said it, we sung it tonight. You are worthy to receive all honor and all glory, all dominion, all riches, all blessing, all acknowledgement, all praise and worship. You alone are worthy, for you have redeemed us out of every kindred, and tribe, and tongue, and nation, and you made us kings and priests to your God, our God, and we shall reign upon the earth with you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We sing the song of the Lamb, for salvation has come, and our God has triumphed, and 
Salvation, it belongs to our God and to him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. We declare this today in Jesus' name. And all of heaven is filled with your glory. And all the earth shall be filled with your glory as the water cover the sea. We, declare, we are going to see this. We're yes, going to yes. experience it. We're going to walk in this. We're going to acknowledge it. And we will see it. <laughs> Where to go? I got translated. I got translated. Oh, Mike so was here. slain in the spirit. I'm so here. <laughs> Fell into the power. He was not sharing that vision. Glory, glory, glory. It's coming mm. more and more upon the church. We declare your goodness, your greatness, and amazing, astounding acclamations of praise and amazing, all, all struck miracles. In Jesus' yes. name. Wow. Yeah. We thank you, Jesus, for your glory yeah. and your majesty. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's <laughs> what I love about Wednesdays is not only have we spent the day in prayer, we just kind of carry that spirit into the service, and it's imparting, it's receiving. Uh, Rosie, would you come and share? Because you, Rosie, is been re having reoccurring visions of the power of the light and light that's being revealed. And we know John talks about that. He was the light. Life was the light of men and the light was the darkness could not comprehend it. We just finished Hanukkah. We're, we, we're walking in a moment of time. So yeah, please release what you're seeing. Oh, praise the Lord. Every time I come to this house, I just feel the presence of the Lord. And you know how it comes? From all of you. Mm -hmm. You bring the light. This is it. It is so amazing. Every time the church doors open, I can't wait to come in. It used to be not that way because of, um, I know I repetition tell you about the orphanage, but some have not met me and maybe in the media or uh, have not heard of my story and everything. And it was a dark, dark place because being in the orphanage, uh, especially with an aunt who was a witch, she claimed my soul. I saw her sacrificing and, and came one night when I was sleeping and my uh, other family aunt. I always tell little bits and pieces that pastor hasn't heard. It's like, wow, you know. But my stories are so there's just so much cut up and so much things in my life and sometimes I have to erase it and everything so I know what darkness mean and it's really really hard you know and and um, <clears throat> it, uh, it was devastating when I I felt and all fearful in my life all the time I just uh, they put me in a dark place constantly in the closet and everything so I've known darkness so it is good to be in the house of the Lord that uh, believes in light, life, and, and I don't know where everybody's life is. Everybody has a story. I can't share what I've gone through to change your life. You have to experience to, uh, through the words and, you know, how many times we testify. But if you're not ready to hear, uh, you don't have an anointing ears, it doesn't penetrate. For the longest time, it wouldn't penetrate. I would always run from all these meetings and I was hiding from, you know, in the workplace. It's not hiding from where I love working. That's what I'm saying. I love working. You'll catch me always working instead of sitting and listening. I'll, but I do catch it in the atmosphere and I do listen to my pastor. And um, <clears throat> like last, last, um, last Wednesday, I mean, when you come in, absorb. I mean, not absorb, but observe what the Holy Spirit is doing. Tap in. The Jubilee has tapped in the spirit realm. Mm. And it's up to you, your responsibility to tap into the realm. And so, and, and so I just, uh, just, you know, get into that place. I love your secret place because that's so true. You wake up and you're in the flesh. But then you quickly switch into this into that realm, into the spirit. Okay, no, I feel cold. I feel hot. No, I refuse that. I'll get up and 
and I'm going to show this cold atmosphere. I can, you know, I can, I can endure this cold. And it's just your mindset, you know, and you start shifting into the spirit realm and things start happening. It starts getting, you're being confident in everything. But last Wednesday, okay, that's what the Lord's saying. When you, when you wake up, ask the Holy Spirit. I have an oil, oil anointing on, on a counter somewhere, and I just touch my ears. I say, Lord, I want to hear you. Like Jeremiah, uh, the Lord says, what do you see? What do you hear? You know, it's, it's very important these days that you listen. Mm -hmm. You listen because that's where the light brings to your direction. Commit your day to the Lord. Because in the Bible, it says somewhere, you know, <clears throat> passing those, all the verses and addresses, I don't know. It's somewhere in the Bible. But it did say that the light comes into your pathway, and you won't trip. And you mm. won't, you know, nine, Psalms 91 says, you will not dash your foot against a stone. And that is so true, everything. Back to last Wednesday. So last Wednesday, when the menorah was being lit, and, and, and I was staring at it with high expectation. And it, it kind of like I was in a different world and each, each candle was lit up. And, and every light that was lit up, I was imagining souls. And it gave me the chills because this is what he's doing. He wants us to light up the, the dark places. And when I saw Ellie putting up these trees, I was like, whoa, that is so, I mean, it's like a childlike. I mean, I don't know where I am sometimes in the spirit realm, but I started just, you know, imagining myself playing in the snow. And that's why it's so important to mm -hmm. be outside because Jesus was born in the cold, you know, I mean, we, we don't know nothing what these nations are going through. They need light. Mm -hmm. so, so it is very important that we decrease and he increase, that increase the light. When they see our eyes, what do they see? What do they see? I don't want them to see me. They, I want them to see yes. the Savior. Yes. Oh, yes. Lord, let me light up that candle because... I visualize, I visualize, it is amazing. I was thinking of Pastor Diana's daughter, or Ben, getting married, and, and Jenna. And that was like two, three years ago. And, and, and it seems like all these events are coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Christmas is coming. Mm -hmm. Next year is mm -hmm. coming. <laughs> We are going to be face to face with our Savior. And I don't, and you don't, want to see anyone that you have a relationship next door. Even if you don't know your neighbor, pray for them. Pray for them. And if there's a negative conversation and they are mentioning about you know, magnify what their situation is. I said, pray for them. Maybe they don't see. So, Lord, I just want to thank you yes, Jesus. for the radiant light that the body of Christ is, Father, tapping yes, yes. in. Father, you are light. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. You deserve it because you are the high priest. Your blood, you are sitting next to the, to the Father of lights, of life, Whoa. Yes, of yes, resurrection. Yes. We are resurrected. This world does not know resurrection. It only knows deterioration. It only knows darkness. It only knows a, a, a death, but we, the body of Christ, is full of life and light and electricity. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We speak life. And Lord, as Mike has spoken, 
to the prophecy of the corn, I say yes and amen that, Father, the best is to come to Jubilee Church. Yes, yes. And, Father, mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord. You show me a double door, and it's red, and it's to the nation. It is towards the nation of all culture, whether it's in our neighborhood or in our marketplace. Everyone has a culture and a destiny and a, 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 a tribe or a, a family unit. And Father, mm -hmm. I thank you for health and light. You're lighting up every household. And when I hear someone that's so devastating and, and hurting, and I speak light, life, yes. resurrection in your house, I say shift, I say turn around. It doesn't have to be, just like Mike was saying, we will not engage to lies. We only engage into the supernatural that you have given us the authority. Jesus says, take it. Take my authority. And I, say, I saw this morning, as I was praying this morning, the Lord was saying, healing has already started in this place. Healing. Mm -hmm. Just receive it, says the Lord. Receive mm -hmm. it, says mm -hmm. the Lord. Just believe. And so we thank you, Father. This is a new day. This is the 8th of the December. And so, Father, we come expecting and we thank you for your light and your life that's living through us, through us in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. amen. I'm going to take us to Hebrews chapter 5. Becky, I'll have you close with the release of those miracles. But um, I want to do Hebrews chapter 6. We are learning to see Jesus in Hebrews because Hebrews gives us the biggest uh, post-resurrection, ascension description of his present-day job, high priest of our confession. So in verse 8, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience to things by which he suffered, having been perfected, he became the author, which literally means the cause of sal eternal salvation to all who obey him. The key about obedience is I learned to listen under him. I hear what he's saying over me. I don't let what's happening to me or at me or next to me to find me. I allow those words, which means I walk in conflict or con uh, paradoxes. He's saying it's blessing time, and I'm looking around going, I see scarcity. He's saying it's where, where uh, you, are, you are my son, and I deeply love, and I see rejection. So I, the training for reigning is to learn to hear what he's saying rather than experience what's happening. So then it goes on, and he says, called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom, of this Melchizedek, we have much to speak and hard to explain since you become dull of hearing. So now is where, again, we can, I say to the men, you've got to come with a believing heart. You've got to come with a confessing mouth. You've got to give God an hour of your day. And then you've got to come engage in the Holy Spirit and belief in the truth. And if you'll do that, everything will become what it is to be because you're in Christ and Christ knows where he's taking us. But it, but it takes that effort. I, for Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the first principles of the oracles of God, and you come to need milk and not solid food. We, we know, understand babies and mature digestive systems. They're, they're different kinds of food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. That's very key. The word, the logos of righteousness... To understand that we are righteous in Christ, through Christ, righteous by faith, from God, and it's not appropriate any other place in any other way. So that becomes established. But until that, we're just a baby. We don't speak. We don't have a confession. We don't have a conversation we're carrying in our times of prayer. <laughs> That's why for many, prayer seems to be like, well, I could tell God in five minutes what I need, so what, why would I want to spend an hour? Well, you're not really, we're, we're, we're t taking the time to learn to see and to learn to hear and learn to be known and to follow. And it's much more than getting requests answered. For everyone who partakes only of the milk is unskilled, but solid food belongs to those who are full age. 
uh, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Learning to practice inside the word with Jesus, which is what we're going to do on Saturday, is where we begin to dis- get our capacity to see, hear, and understand, exercised to discern both good and evil all in all settings and all situations so that we are no longer, we're not naive, we walk in purity. Adam and Eve were naive, but when they learned good and evil, their light went off, their spirit died, and the whole tear, treachery set, called for a savior. But now that we are saved, we are going to grow in the discernment and learn that it's not through the works, it's through the trust and so forth. So here is verse chapter 6. People stumble on this all the time, but not necessary. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Everybody say perfection. That is a biblical term all throughout New Testament, and it means completion. It means becoming into the completion of Christ, to being complete inside him. Uh, matured, yes, uh, and you it's not a new fancy car off the show lot it's a restored vintage car so it's gone through whatever it went through but it's been brought into christ and to become one in in conformity into his image uh, okay but what do we how do we get there we don't lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works which means we often are thinking there's something i got to do to get to where i'm supposed to be there's something i need to undo to get where i'm to get out of where I got. There's something someone else needs to do so I can go where I'm going. That are all dead works. And when they get religious, they stink the worst because they, they, they ascribe a control mechanism and, a, and, and all the things that God's not about. Instead, he's relationship. But, and, and faith toward God. Faith toward God. Ex- expectancy of the fullness of what he accomplished and what Jesus is praying to be uh, is is accomplished and what he's done is settled and it's not a question of of do I you know re, reconsider what I have already believed of the doctrine of baptism baptisms is is the from the beginning of baptism into the body of Christ into the into his death in the baptism in the waters baptism of the Holy Spirit baptism of fire it's just there's so much of immersion that's what we're being immersed immersed into of laying on of hands how, how there is the blessing by the laying on of hands. There is the uh, commissioning by the laying on of hands. There is healing by the laying on of hands. And of resurrection of the dead, both Jesus and the resurrection of the dead that we as believers are coming to experience more and more. The resurrection of all the dead, first at the first rapture and then at the, at the, at the great white throne of judgment. And then that leads us to eternal judgment where we are understanding how the devil's been judged. We're learning how we will be judged. We are judged at the, right, at, the, at the seat of Christ. The rest of who are not found in the Lamb's book of life are judged at the eternal, at the great white throne of judgment. So again, that's not baby stuff. And you can understand. But here's the key. And this we will do if God permits. So you don't just get to say, oh, I got all that down. Well, God may not think you do. And you know, how do you know you don't? You keep going back to repeating those storylines. You keep needing that milk again. And that's pretty strong milk, to be honest. Uh, most believers, if you say, hey, could you explain to me the six elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ? I, I'm just curious how they're working in your life. They first wouldn't even know there were six elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ. And then if you started to look at it, you go, wow, that, there's, some, there's some breadth and depth to that. Okay, but what's the issue? It's impossible for those who were once enlightened. Now we're talking about five things. And I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to inspire us. I'm not afraid of this. I want in. And I'm touching some of it. And I get to, I get to do those like little trips to the college to check where you're going to be studying. Because it says it's impossible. And the reason is you'll hear at the end. For those who were once enlightened, that's what Rosie's talking about, light, illumination. It means that we see the light, we respond, Christ shines in us, we're born again. We've come into a a real place that we're not in the darkness anymore, we're inside the light. We know, oh, wow. And of course, this is a growing encounter. This is more than one time. 
But Jesus admonished at the end of his earth walk, walk in the light as you have the light so you don't, otherwise you'll not know what you're stumbling over. And have tasted the heavenly gift. That literally is we've ate Jesus. As he said, eat my body, drink my blood. We've tasted. As he said to the woman of Samaritan, if you knew the gift of heaven, you would ask and he would give you living water. So there's this partaking and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. You know, you hear us around Jubilee because it's a, we're a spirit-filled church and we've been in, in following, being led by the Spirit for as many years as we have. You get in the Spirit. It says in Revelation chapter 1, the whole 21 chapters that follow is because of one, one situation was happening in chapter 1. And John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Well, I, how many have ever been in the flesh? That's, you know, that's, that's where you wake up because the flesh is what was sleeping and your soul was re- recovering and you're just in the natural. But so it takes... In, putting your mind on the things above, setting your, and then you're in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, the accessibility of God to communicate is exponential, and that's where revelation, dreams, and all that happen. And those who've tasted the good word of God, this is not elementary learning, because it's not about learning. Everything in the scripture is to experience Jesus in. But Jesus said to the Pharisees, you study the script. You search and study the scriptures because you think inside them you have life. As though we could kind of like take a, uh, you know, a book about God and understanding the book, we could have God. He said, but you won't refuse to come to me. If you don't bow your knee to me, they, they testify all to me. So all scripture leads us to Jesus. And if, if we do not find Jesus at the end of our meditation journey, we're probably wasted our time or getting off in deception. Back to works, dead works. So there it goes again. If and the powers of the age to come. We are we're stepping across the ages. We're stepping into the next millennial, and we're stepping, and we're going to see that begin to show up in the in the in the present settings. We're going to see the miraculous things taking place of the new of the new millennial. And people that start. So you see those five things. You're and I want in because I want it. I, I, what else are we going to pursue but the one who found us? But he says it's impossible to re- renew them to repentance again if they fall away. So when you become a focused person that said, okay, I'm, I, I'm responding to the calling. I'm the enlightenment. And I'm tasting Jesus. And I know, understand that something's really transacting. We're dev- eating and and I also recognize the, the partaking partnership, the companionship of the Holy Spirit. And the living word of God now is something from which I feed off of. And it literally does bring, I live by the word that proceeds out of your mouth. And I'm touching some of those powers of dunamis of the age to come. Now, if you're in that practical place, and I don't know, think anyone in this room, I know I'm not. So I, I know there's so much. But that's why God permits, because he says, I really need you to be understood in the word of righteousness. Otherwise, you're going to keep falling to accusation and all the things that can happen. She says, if you, if you were there and you just sit up, walk away. He says, you can't, it's just impossible. You can't just go and crucify to yourself and, for, and put the Lord back to an open shame. So there's, there's a place that says, hey, No. We don't go this far in and get to just kind of whack out and whack in. You know, it's, there's something. And I think that's a rarity because, unfortunately, the body of Jesus has been super immature. Babies always needing to be told, Jesus loves you. Yes, it's okay. We're all wonderful. You think, we think you're wonderful. Everybody's wonderful because we all need to be wonderful because we're grown up in the self-esteem movement. Oh, dear Jesus. No fear of God, no recognition of the supremacy of Christ, no submission, no bowing the knee. So we've just been in a little, you know, and that's okay, because I'll tell you the secret. God knows the future. And revelation, the more the revelation, the stricter the judgment. So here's the way it works. It's always that way, and it's, I've heard it through a missionary movement way back. 
When God begins to perceive that you are no longer listening and your heart is hardening and you're starting to refuse his voice, he dims and backs away. He dims and he backs away because he's doing it in mercy. Because if he was to continue to reveal himself in his presence, his glory, his truth, at one point that glory and presence and truth will require submission. And it gets violent at times if it's a way. Now, for instance, in, one, in chapter uh, 4 of Acts, we were at the height of... One of the height of the expression of the power, the demonstration of the, of the spirit of, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The spirit is moving so strongly, people are giving away their homes. They're selling them literally, taking all the proceeds and just putting them at the apostles' feet. There's just such a strong move. But there's a couple. They want in, but they don't want in. They want all the credit for doing what they didn't do. So what they do is they sell their house, but then they probably had second thoughts. So that's a whole lot of money. But you know what? Why not just give part of the money? Which is totally fine. It would have been, you could have given them no money. What happened was, when they gave the money, they made it to appear that they were giving all the money. And so the Spirit of God rises up in Peter. Do you read it in the, in the book? He said, what do you, 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 how dare you? You lied against the Holy Spirit. He said, when it was yours, it was yours. And when you sold, it was yours. You didn't lie to man. You lied to the Holy Spirit. And they died. Because the, the brighter the light, the stricter, the quicker, the sharper the thing. So God knows that there's seasons where he says, you know, I'm just, you know, I love you. I want to be with you. But we're going to have to kind of be just a little more distant. You want all the benefits, but you won't submit to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, to who I am and allow me to be who you want. I need you to, uh, to be for you. But we're in a season where the hunger is growing. And we can't live in this outer court stuff. And we're tired of trying to have a good American life and call it Christian. We're ready for Christ and whatever he is and whatever he's doing. And I'm so hungry these days, so thirsty. So here's what he says. The earth which drinks rain that often comes upon it and bears her herbs useful to those for whom it was cultivated receives blessing from God. So God's looking for fruitfulness. But if it bears thorns and briars, it's rejected and near being uh, cursed, whose end is to be burned. So he's helping us with the parable, contrasting. If you're just receiving, getting, doing nothing, but returning nothing, but, but the briars, and the, there just gets a point where it, it's ready to be cursed. And if there's something that's coming out of our life, that's coming, responding to the Lord, it's a spark, it's, a, it's faith, and again, so much about the word of righteousness, which is why so many struggle to ever touch the others. But he says, beloved, we're confident of better things. Amen. Better things concerning you. Yes, that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work of faith or work of, uh, work, your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name and that you minister to the saints and do minister. The safest thing we can always do is love each other. The best thing we can always do is extend love to each other because love covers the multitude of sins because love is the perfection. Love is maturity of all, all things. It's, so we desire that each of you show the same diligence. See, we're showing a, a level of intentional pursuit because you have to, to the full assurance of hope, It's not how high you were when you first got the word and hope came alive. It's how assured of the confidence of that hope you are at the very end. He's not even measuring accomplishment. He's measuring what's the level of hope. Isn't that funny? Which means that's where the war's over. The war's over your hope. The expectancy of what's going to turn into. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So faith and patience inherit the promise. Faith is what comes from the word spoken, what God has accomplished. Patience is what we hold while we wait for the unfolding of that. For when God made a promise to Abraham, I'll catch this and I'll close right here tonight. Because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. So the oath, 
we're gonna, we're gonna, and that's a really important thing when God makes an oath, and he doesn't do it all at times, but everyone he speaks an oath to has a profound position in Christ. He says to Abraham, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. We default to that meant he finally got Isaac. But he did not make that promise until he offered Isaac as an offering. That is a promise of the Messiah coming. Revelation, 20, uh, John, uh, Genesis, I think, 21 or 22. It is the promise of the Messiah coming through his lineage. And so he obtained the promise. Jesus says in his earth walk, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. I'm telling you, there's a world that we're supposed to live from that's not anything to do with the defining world that we're in. And, it, and we can see into millennial. We can see beyond where we currently have access to. So, menswear, to oath of confirmation, no more dispute. So God makes it a point that that's what he's going to do because he cannot lie. Just keep jumping ahead, verse 17. And thus determined, verse 18, it was impossible for God to lie so we could have strong consolation who have laid hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, sure, steadfast, that enters within the presence behind the veil. If depression begins to pull us down, if discouragement begins to drag us down, if confusion, and we just can't see anything. That's the direction the earth takes us. There we are so grateful that the hope that anchors my soul is actually in heaven. So if I lift up my head and I begin to see the redemption that's drawing near, even though, the, though the things are happening here, I begin to find that there is a de- another place that I, takes me into the presence behind the veil where Jesus Christ, my forerunner, the high priest, is there. Beloved, that's where we are. Becky, come on up. Get ready to receive. Uh, would you all, let's all stand. I believe there's a hope awakening, a freshing, a refreshing of assurance and we're going to close because we don't want to keep it long I want us to get get this and take it with us I wish we had time so that Ali could give a testimony of what happened to her today but it was so where we are right now but I'm just going to release to you what we did what we prayed was exactly what pastor talked about what Larry talked about Michael talked about everybody Rosie it was the light of God but it's coming not like uh, in Revelations 22, it talks about there be no sun, there, there's no moon, there's no, no light from somewhere else. There's not going to be any Christmas lights as beautiful as we think they are. The light that's coming is Jesus Christ himself. Mm. There is a power coming that we have not mm. tasted yet. There is a mm. Jesus coming that it's not the Jesus mm. that we, we sing about and all that. There is an awesome, mm. terrible, and sovereign God mm. that is going to step into the atmosphere. And I submit to you mm. that we will fall on our faces and the fear of the Lord will be manifest upon his church. And there is a time and a season for everything. And we are right now at the cusp, at the, at the cliff right now of stepping in to a realm that we have read about, talked about, but never really understood the, the sovereignty and the power of Jesus, the Christ. He is the light of the world, and his light will blind us. Whoa. It will take us into a death of self that we cannot do ourselves. Yes. As much as we cry out for, Lord, I need to die in this area. I need to die in that area. The, and, but we can't. And the Lord is saying, I will come, and my light will will totally take out everything that's alive in you that's not of me. It cannot stay. We'll be on our faces before him and we will shine as the bride of Christ, his body himself and we will join the light. All these things in in the Hebrews that pastor was reading, they're all Jesus. Every one of those five things are Jesus Christ coming into him, being in him. Father, I release to this body and to those online, I release the power to, to know the sovereign 
God in a way that we cannot make it. We cannot do it. We cannot fathom it. We cannot pray about it, talk about it, or anything. All we can do is yield and believe. Father God, we believe in Jesus Christ, and that is our faith. And Father, I thank you for raining down upon your people, you as the light, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Let's praise him. Thank you, Jesus. We receive. Take this into your prayer time tomorrow. Meditate into these areas. There's so much riches that are being given. God bless you. Love you. We'll see you Friday night, 6.30, the album release party, 7.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We're going to, or actually in the cafe, we'll start with breakfast and 8 o'clock in the sanctuary for the men's inheritance. Blessings. Love you.